Yes. You want to put it on, on, on the air, Pastor Alfie? Yep. Yes. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. I love this picture because Jesus and the cross is for all nations, all people everywhere. May Amen. the light of Christ and his cross shine upon every soul and every spirit and every man and woman or child who are attending yeah. our meeting and yeah. even for their families, Father. We pray that in your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, so I just wanted to speak today about the cleansing. I want to speak about knowing him. So I love mm -hmm. this is one of my best loved Bible verses ever that I may know him. I may know him. I may know him. We mm. sometimes think we know the Lord, mm. but I'm trying uh, really to tell you the more I read the Old Testament, the more I feel like, do I really know him? Do I really know the Lord? Mm. The more you read the words and you feel like, yeah. So that, uh, that uh, Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 10, that I may mm. know him. So he is just like wishing for himself to know him and the power of the resurrection. So knowing mm. Christ is like having a relationship with him, but knowing the power of what he did on the cross and your mm. victory over the, the things that has been against you, that's called the power of his resurrection. He is in you and his power make you overcome to the things that is facing you. Is that all that Apostle Paul said? No, more. What is it more? And the fellowship of his suffering. So if you're passing into a rough time or hard time, whatever, maybe you should be, you're, you're upset, you're whatever, but just think about it in a different angle. See that the Lord is allowing you to have the fellowship of his suffering. So you suffer with him, you know. When I was with my friend, who lost her, her, her uh, dear one, uh, I, I just was with her into her suffering. You cannot really take from it, but I mean like, you are with the suffering of Christ. How honor is this? Those, those suffering is because of you personally and me personally. So carry a little bit of what we supposed to have is something good. We feel with him and being uh, made com conformable unto his death. It means we'll be like him when mm -hmm. we die or when we go and meet with him. And last time we spoke about that very clearly. We, we said that we do not know what we're going to be, but we know that we will be like him. And why we do not know? It's not a secret. It's not like the Lord is not known. The Lord already is very known since he came in the person of Jesus Christ on earth. People witness him as human like us. He has every aspect of humanity like us. But why we do not know how we're going to be? Because everyone will be on the likeness of the Lord according to his level. So glory from glory, we got that message last time. So if you are high in the glory, the glory of God will come upon you and the shiny glory of his presence on you will be higher, very higher than other people who are on lower glory. That's why we do not know. We do not know how higher glory you will be when you meet with him. But when you meet with him, you're gonna take all what you spend on earth doing. So it's not something unknown, but it is unknown to you. On that time, you will reflect. He cannot give you more than you can contain because it can hurt you. But knowing that all the eternity will go from revelation to revelation, glory to glory. So we will grow uh, into places where uh, higher and higher. But the moment you meet him, you will be like what you did here. It's nearly probably the same um, idea. But now here, <clears throat> I found very, very strange, and, and I didn't get this from cross-reference, like the Lord was telling those words, and I get them by search. Jesus said on John, that you worship what you do not know, uh, to the Samaritan woman. Uh, he told her, you worship what you do not know, but we worship what we know, because salvation is from the Jews. This is very important, because like I said earlier, I do not know uh, many things sometimes, uh, the more you read and, and the, the because we're not raised into the culture of the Jewish background, so all the things that they have, it's a little bit un it's like someone is telling his story, but we don't live that. 
and they too cannot comprehend the, you know, the salvation which is given to us in Christ. The same thing, but salvation is definitely from the Jews. And in the book of Acts 17, verse 23, he said, uh, Apostle Paul was talking to them, um, and I passed by and beheld your devotion, and I found an altar with an inscription, and it's written on it to an unknown God. Sometimes I think we Christians are worshiping a God of the Jews, which is truth. But he is our God. Unless, you know, we dig deeper and find all the things that is not even revealed to you by your culture or by your um, church thing, you know more about God of Abraham, Jacob, and um, Isaac and Jacob more and more. Uh, in Roman, he said, um, for the wrath of God is not revealed and God who hold the truth from because that which may be known of God is my, yeah. He's talking here in Roman one about God revealed himself. God revealed himself. Again, all the ungodliness and the unrighteousness. He didn't hold the truth. He wanted to be known by you, by me, by him, by us. But the ungodly people, the unrighteous people, he hold nothing of the truth about himself. So I don't know how much of I know him uh, you can tell about yourself. But the Apostle Paul give us that beautiful Philippians 3.10 that you want to know him and to know the power who coming from his resurrection. The fellowship of the suffering when we pass in a hard time and the, the conforming to be like him when we meet with him. But here he's saying here, God didn't hide any truth because that which may be known of God, uh, uh, known of God is many, God manifests himself into the nature, into his creation. He showed unto them. Them it means everyone. He didn't exclude, you know, uh, those one who are righteous or unrighteous. For the invisible things of him, there is part of God which is invisible. No matter what, we cannot really uh, have an access. Things are revealed to men. This is ours, which things are not revealed. And it's for God. We leave it for God. There is a Bible verse about that um, meaning. So the invisible things of him from the creation. I didn't know why I go into the, the forest or a waterfall and I love them and I fall in love with them. I didn't know that was a part of me loving the creator. Yeah, you get fall in love with different culture, colors of trees and, and size of everyone. And as, as if I are different human and different nature and different whatever. And I don't know why I go into this in deep. It's maybe because I'm adoring God through the nature. And that Bible verse is telling this. The invisible part of God is shown into his creation. And the words are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. So everything God made, you should know him by this. Or the work of his hand. Go on a trip. You know, we're in Australia from, from place to another you can see like a lot of green around you and you look at them and look at stones and, and a little bit of cut up mountains and you say, wow, you give yourself to that. So you're seeing a face of God, part of his handwork. Uh, so God allow us to see all this. And he said here being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, even those very secretive things of him. So though no one will be with excuse. He exposed himself like that for you and I to be able to see him because that when they knew him, those people who are ungodly and unrighteous are going to take themselves to the depths of the lake of fire. When they knew him, what did they do? They didn't glorify him as God. Neither were thankful. And I just want to stop here because the whinging that you whinge all the time can I take you to, to that place of darkness? You, and people come to me with this and this, and I said, oh, did you see? You fall, that huge fall, but God saved you. Did you see that saving hand? Instead of saying the fall, oh, you get into the hospital, her, her aorta, which is the biggest artery in her body, is leaking, uh, blood is coming out of her, clots in her legs, lady telling me, and, and, and she's uh, saying that to me, I said, listen, woman, you, your end was announced, but you said your grandchildren still want you and they pray for you. 
see the hand of God of rescuing you. Your days are numbered, your days are uh, done, but the Lord is giving you extra days for those children who wanted to always see the good hand of God into this. And you never see that except when you start to thank him for everything. You find everything is expensive, life is hard. Thank you, Lord, is hard. But through all this, you will take me because I'm your child. There is special provision for me through you. It's everywhere, war, every, but there is peace specially for the children. He mark our territory and our houses. So when you see, well, no promises that the, the world be better. The worst is in the Bible everywhere, the things gonna be in the end very, very hard for everyone. But there will be a place through the Thanksgiving. It's gonna be dark for everyone, but our room will be light. And there will be this in every house, man, our house will be protected. And you see the hand of God. So here they didn't glorify him. Okay, they don't wanna glorify, but neither they thank him. With this protection, that special treatment among all the calamity was there in Egypt and the hand of God was over the children. His children in a specific area put his hand like this to protect them. They don't thank him for this. And problem of the Jew, Jews or Israelites, they didn't know him as God. And that's why they enter into all those things. And then the vain in their imagination. You give your imagination to everything which is not even worthy or lustful, whatever. Foolish heart has darkened. So here is that same God, which is of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and, and Rebekah, Jacob and, uh, uh, and his wife, uh, Rachel. Rebekah? What's Rachel. Her? And his wife, Rachel, yeah. But Rachel. he's also the God of Jesus and Mary. It's the God of Peter and Paul. It's the God of Priscilla and Phoebe. He's the same God, but we don't call him by those names. We don't call him the, the God of Peter and Paul. Priscilla and Achilla and, and Phoebe. Those are female yeah. names. We don't call him by those names. He's still God of Abraham, Jacob. So we don't know mm -hmm. him into that side of being the father of Abraham and Sarah and the father of Peter and Paul, Priscilla and Phoebe. No, we don't. So it's either here and there, but every time you read the Bible and you get into this, you think I know him. Maybe I don't know him the same way that Apostle Paul described it. When I have suffering, I whinge. I find the way not to thank him. My heart go for all imagination of bad coming and happening to me. Problem of the Jews, there are people who are enslaved in a legalistic religion. They were stuck into this. God give them the cleansing. Tahara, we're gonna speak about it now. But why? Because he already saved them. He already delivered them. For us as a Christian, Jesus saved us and he delivered us, but we're still fighting with demons and fighting with whatever, whatever. You don't see that into the culture of the Jews. Well, they are, they have to keep themselves clean so they can come close to God. And my, my question for you, because I give myself a big uh, gift this week, I cleanse all my cupboard and the things from years and whatever. And I said, wow, I felt a little bit of holiness with this. And I just ask for the Christian, do you really clean your cupboard? Do you know that this is part of your holiness? You are unholy, you're dirty, you're not clean. The Jews have some rituals in every year. I remember time of my mother, you know, when you get a special cleaning on the Christmas and Easter and a big one, and they do something like, and it's taken, of course, from uh, the culture of the Jewish culture, you know, special, and they go and check if there is mold on everything and whatever. Do we do that in our houses? I, I remember I heard Joyce Mayer from years ago, you know, talking to women, is your house clean? You know, go and clean your house because this is part of your salvation. Don't think reading the Bible all the time. My son that said that to me, mom, please, I don't wanna, um, you know, throw your life in the, and, and, and by cleaning after you, just the things that you do not want. And I take it like really deep 
And on the same week, I said, finish. Everything should go. Everything unwanted should go. Make decision for your life. Cut every branch with not proofing things that you didn't use for years. Clean your house. And I'm not going to go for that, but I'm going to talk about the cleansing because if you're dirty, if you are unclean, first of all, the connection, you know, when you have a battery and it's already start to rust because you're unclean, it does not transmit, it does not receive from the, it doesn't work. So you have block with you and with God. But again, something even worse, you attract the evil. Demons love the dirty place. They love the dirty dwelling. They love it. They come to it. So you invite yourself to powers, which you don't know. Oh, why am I under attack? Because you, you, you are unclean. So you put your, you know, a bit of rubbish in front of your house. And I'm telling you, within a few days, you find that many people come and put even more. No jokes. Dirt attract dirt, attract evil spirits. So we be careful about those things. Because we've seen it into the culture of the Jews, but I do not know about the culture of the Christian. Do we really put that as something important in our life that make ourselves, uh, our houses, our uh, place of clean? So here we're going to speak about, um, um, so we cannot really continue to see that religion of Judaism as whatever, because they locked into the tradition of men. Though everything would have a reason, God want this cleanness, and we're going to speak about it now, because this is the way that you can approach him. They are already saved from the hand of the Pharaoh. They are already redeemed. They are already delivered from all the evil gods of Egypt. And now here, they, to approach their God, they should just clean, keep yourself clean so you can approach him. When for us as a Christian, even we had the eternal salvation of the Christ. We somehow missing these things. Uh, we're not really doing this or either or. We're not going to be locked into the, 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 uh, the attack on Jesus that he didn't keep the Old Testament and the, the covenant and, all the, and the Sabbath and all this because it's all rubbish. <clears throat> uh, but Jesus gave us a covenant like no one. So this is here a picture about the invisible things of God show us. He show us about things of the invisible of his beauty, of the things of his universe, where work of his hand beyond your understanding. And even though they saw those things, so God didn't hide himself. You don't see me, see me, I'm very clear, but they rejected him. As we said here, um, never glorify him, neither thank him, and, and in vain imagination, darken their heart and all those things to qualify for eternal fire that God didn't create for them. And, and now here, <clears throat> I'm just going to speak about, because the picture is always clear for me, unless the church and the Jews come together. And I know that this is not going to happen before the millennium reign of Christ. But this is here picture of the, the seven um, um, sacraments of the Christian faith, which the traditional churches are like the baptism, confirmation, or the baptism in the Holy Spirit, water, and the baptism of fire, communion, the, com the, the compassion, and then all those are sacrament of marriage, of ordination, and that seven type of um, sacrament. And why sacrament? Because something in them, even is a symbolic of something that God is doing, we do not know why. That's why it's a sacrament. So desecrate those things is rubbishness from the people who desecrated them. And something happened, we baptize the child, the baptize of water. What is it you do not know? It's a touch of God on it. It's, it's, it's something happened when you go for the sacrament of marriage. What is it we do not know? But we're talking about the marriage done by God, something into the ordination. And I have a beautiful picture. I may show it to you now or later. But before we move, here the protest, Protestant movement came and had the beauty, the word of God, the word of God, the spiritual food. So the, or the, the basic church or the or a traditional church, they have those sacraments, beautiful things, which was their light was dimmed by the reformer churches. The, old, the new churches came with, a reformer churches came with the light of the word of God. 
So you don't have a, a priest to, I, I clear it for you. They didn't know how to read the word. And instead of sitting with them and read and explain to them the word of God and make it easy for them, they attack every uh, sacred things that, that they have, the, ordin the old church. The new church came and, and just push it away. But neither nor is the correct. We need both because without the, and we need to add as well, you know, the part where the Jewish um, tradition and culture and, and the part of the Old Testament be added to us. Unless with that, we're not really uh, coming to the completion of the bride of Christ. And I create this picture for myself uh, because I'd like you to see this. If you get into the ordination, it's Christ who is ordaining you. We're talking about the sacrament. If you're talking about the baptism, I, I couldn't find a picture for Jesus baptizing. Try to find and send me one. But it's because it's the baptism of Jesus. Jesus said, uh, uh, the Baptist said that he, Jesus will come after him, talking about him, he will baptize you with fire. With the Holy Ghost and fires. And even that we don't have any photo showing us Jesus the baptizer. So I pretend that this picture, Jesus is baptizing you. But it's the hand of the Lord who is doing those sacraments. He come and he do this. He do the communion. It's no one else. He do the confession. When you come and, and, and confess your sin, uh, I mean, like, uh, you, you don't think that you went to a priest or whatever to confess those things. You think you get into the presence of God and he himself give you the pass. Your sins are forgiven like he did for the, the woman. Who is here, you know, counting her sin, you know? If you stone her first. I'm not stoning her. You give her the pass. You're clean. Just do not sin anymore. So those are the, the, the sacraments. Who is marrying you? That's why the covenant is not a contract. But we all have the picture of Jesus as the healer. Easy to find pictures. Like you. But Jesus giving you the communion for yourself is very hard to find. When I just, I'm not going to go to story for the time. But I mean, I had an experience when I received Christ in the beginning. I was in the church even with open eyes, and I'm not really a fan of pastors or priests or whatever, but it was just like the guy, he looked so much like Jesus. He was not like Jesus in the look. But I mean like this something, a revelation for you that every sacrament and every part of those uh, things that the church uh, make them sacred because God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit are doing them by themselves. I know that's a topic a little bit out of my topic, but uh, I just want you to know about that. And you get a resurrection life and, and the forgiveness of sins, you know, and Jesus is sin forgiven. And the, <clears throat> and the preaching of the word is Jesus. When you go to a priest or a pastor or a church, just raise your heart before listening to the word. Lord, I'm here. I want to listen from you. I know that I are not ex experienced in preaching the word and not excellent. But I want to hear direction, anything I need to hear from you personally, Lord. And you find that the preaching is different level. So all those sacraments are the Lord. But here is one very important slide that Jesus is teaching. Jesus is washing uh, um, your feet. We're talking about the cleansing. So we are baptized one time, die with Christ, not again but we can be washing the feet every time we go out and come in Christ on that dinner show. Ah, you have ah, cleansed, no, wash my head. No, 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 you already washed. Your head is already washed. You just need cl cleaning of your um, feet because you walk into, still into this earth and there is dust and dirt in it. Uh, so back to our topic here um, and our reading will be, so I want you to understand that. The old sacrament things are not completed without reading the word of God. Protestants should sit there and, and read the Bible to the Catholic and the, Protest, the, the Orthodox and tell them what is written in it. If they claim they have a better understanding. Problem is everyone give explanation and, and do the things which suit his denomination and attack others. So we're not going anywhere. Um, but 
That's my desire that one of those days I will see the church as Jesus prayed, the bride of Christ all in one. The story that we're talking about, about the cleansing, uh, and it's, it's coming from the chapter two of John, that miracle in the third day, and he's not telling us the third day of what? It's probably the third day of the marriage. Uh, there was a marriage in Cana and Gal Galil, and mother of Jesus was there in Cana of Galilee. And there were sit here six water pots of stone. That's our topic, the cleansing. The, it's called after the men purification of the Jews. So there was a way of purification out of here in Yehud in Arabic. Six spot, big spots for the, the purification of the Jews and contain two measures, two to three measures. It's, it's amount, big amount of water can take. And Jesus said unto them, fill them to the, to the brim, to the top. Uh, so here, and, and then later on, we're not talking about vessels like this. We are talking about vessels like this. And what is the difference between this and other vessels? I just read it from Jewish uh, uh, culture or writing. Uh, these are stone vessels that probably would be do done from one stone. Uh, and, and why? Because in Leviticus, they say um, that, the, that the, the clay, I mean, if you have a pot and anything unclean come to it, you smash it. You don't use it again. So those are uh, those are very expensive because they're stone, but the, those for the purification, they can be reused. It's ordained in ceremonial al cleaning. It's done by um, the Old Testament in details. And don't want to spend too much uh, in it, but if you want Leviticus 11, is explain it, it very, very. So what so, can be unclean? So a person touch a dead, any, a deaf uh, person, whatever. Uh, or touch a woman with, in her menses or touch uh, a leper. All those because of part of the curse. The, the woman in her menses, whatever, or secretion of men or, or diarrhea or all those things. Uh, this is sign of the curse which is given to us. If you touch it, that's, it's all part of the curse. That's why I make the things unclean. Of course, we know all that Jesus came and touched the leper, the unclean, without him being unclean. According to the Jews' law, that Jesus should be unclean because he touched an unclean man. But no, the cleanness and the purity and the holiness of God came upon that man and healed him. So those uh, vessels are very, very special. Uh, and, and they, you can imagine that this can be a priestly household because those are not for everyone or maybe these people are really careful for the cleansing that we spoke about here, the purification of the Jews. I don't think in every house was that, but this was into the yeah. house where in Kanik Galil where the, the uh, so that purification, it was a very important topic to the Jews. It's like Christians speaking about their salvation, exactly, exactly the same level, because they don't have a salvation to speak about, and they don't have deliverance to speak about like Christian doing. So that cleansing is uh, the purification of the Jews, a topic very important. How do I know that? We have that, that uh, purification uh, container, six number, of course, uh, of the lack of, it's a number of men, it's not a complete number. But in John 3, something very important, the disciple of John the Baptist were discussing the matter of that Jesus who show up and he start to go and, and attract more disciples than him uh, in the other place and uh, people are going to him. And then Sean said, if not ordained from God from high is not. So, so what they were speaking about, then there were arose a question between some of the John's disciples and the, the Jews about the purification. That purification is like a topic of salvation for us as Christians. They're speaking it about it into that way. And you go into Mark 7 a little bit further. The Jews came now and they attacking Jesus, the Pharisees and the Jews. And all the Jews. This is very top, important topic for them. If you live in a Muslim country, whatever, you know how the Muslims are copying that cleansing and washing and, and all those things. 
Uh, of course, we didn't have in our culture around us, uh, so we see how Jews do in it. But what we know is only from the Bible. So, uh, and except they, their hands are washed, they cannot really eat. And they were take, holding for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, often means very thoroughly, they eat not. So it's not like you wash like this, wash like the time when we had the, uh, that lockdown, holding the tradition of elders. And because all the rest of the chapter, oh, you're holding in the tradition and we feel like this is not important. No, it is important. It is important that you find a place where you can uh, get clean your house because you love the Lord, it's part of your worship. Um, in Ephesians uh, 5, 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So Protestant take, you know, washing by the word, reading the word of God is, is washing you. And that's the only explanation that they have for that problem of the purification uh, that they have with the Jew. How the, um, the Old Testament was doing it, like Moses. Moses in Hebrew 9, so that's a comment from Apostle Paul in verse 19. For when Moses had spoken every prospect to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wood and hyssop and sprinkled over the book, both the book and all people. Water and blood is sprinkled over people. That was how serious was that. So we uh, don't sprinkle blood because the blood of Jesus' communion is for us so holy that we cannot really allow it to fall on the ground. But I mean, uh, this is where you really can get the blood of Jesus on you. And we don't do calves and goes anymore. But we don't sprinkle even water. Catholic and, pro and Orthodox do the sprinkling of the water because the priest cannot touch every person. By doing that cleansing with the water and sprinkling, we talk about it once before, as if he cleansed that spirit or that person from demons and uncleanness. So we just get rub rub. So when you read this, it doesn't say to you anything. It's not part of your culture. It's not part of your denomination, but it's part of your book. And I do not want someone to tell me Judaizing us. I'm just reading the book for you and, and um, that's from the book of Hebrew. It's not from the Old Testament. That's the, the, the preaching of the Apostle Paul. If this is obsolete, why he keep talking about it? Hebrew 10, he's saying, let us draw near uh, with a true heart, with assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our body washed with pure water. That's very strange that Apostle Paul want our body to be washed with pure water. See, there is a ceremonial water um, that the Jews was doing, but here, because uh, our heart is fingered by Jesus and our bodies, you need to be clean. You have to have shower every day, at least, and other cleansing, and clean your cupboard and doing this. And I'm preaching to myself, guys, I'm not judging anyone, but I felt very, very uh, helped by angel. I Lord, I don't have time. I don't have power, just help me. And he sent like, I don't know how many angels came to my house on that day to cleanse. So here he's saying our body washed with pure water. That's Apostle Paul in the book of Hebrew uh, chapter 10. Let's dig deeper into these things. Thing is, um, Jesus came into that ceremony or that um, uh, banquet, that marriage uh, and and he took that water of the purification and turned it to wine. And before I said, you know, that's, Jesus was not really wanted to do that because he was leaving that exchange uh, to wine in the end before he leave. But some, if you taste Jesus, you know, you cannot taste anything better. Time was not there yet. You have to have an experience with God during your lifetime. And if you don't, it's ritual and it's sticking to nowhere. And, and going from this, so they drink, you know, the water of their um, cleansing, because this was the water of their cleansing. But Jesus was in it. He turned to a wine, the wine which is blood of Jesus for us. So that's a ceremonial cleaning. Um, 
it turned to a real experience with God and they like it so much because you taste Jesus. What else do you want? It was not a story of Jesus bless the marriage and attend and whatever. It can be a deeper, um, like I said, a deeper meaning for it. So those vessels um, are very, very specific. I just took a picture of how the Christian of the Old Testament and New Testament think of those vessels. Leviticus 11, 33 say, if any of these falls into the clay pot, so you have a pot of clay, anything unclean, everything in it will fall, you must break the pot. Finish, done. But we Christian love the, the, the broken pots and we say, oh, whatever. I don't know. I mean, is the one, the writer of the beginning of the book, the same? Th that pot is not good unless it is consecrated. That pot is for the cleansing and the purification as we described earlier. Another one in Leviticus 15, 12. And clay pots that men um, with the discharge touches. Men with this discharge means um, sexual discharge. It's unclean. It must be broken and any wooden uh, your stencil must be rinsed with water. So the wood can be rinsed, but otherwise it's, it makes the things unclean, unused. Um, in Isaiah, let's go see Isaiah, depart, the parts go out from there. Touch no unclean thing come out from it. Purity, purify yourself, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. So vessels of the Lord, it means you are separated, set aside, baptized to serve the Lord, uh, ordained, whatever you, your situation, to be very specific to the Lord. Keep your cleanness. So we spiritualize every aspect into um, uh, the Christian walk. And in the sense, all these are ritual. It's not for me, it's for the Jews. And we cut them. But there is a depth into it. They didn't reach the depths of it, except when they drink the wine, which was changed from the purification water of the Jews to Jesus. They had a, a, an experience with Jesus, and that's very different. Uh, you go for the potter house. And here is a say, a, uh, we are treasure in a jar to clay to show that all surpassing power of, of God, and not any food coming into contact so we see the vessels in a different way, angle. I don't wanna put too much time in it, um, but God wants you to be a holy vessel, a vessel who's gonna be used for honor. What is this picture? Because this is our next story. This is the experience that I'm talking about. That blind man of born blind, is born blind. You can see Jesus' hand create in him. So unless that uh, things happen to you, you will by no means be able to receive Christ. You're gonna be like the cleansing pot, but you never taste that water change into wine. It's, it's, tasting Jesus, you know, and you know, you know, in your heart. Everyone was really saved. He said, I was doing this or this was happening. You know, I have that assurance that I am surely, surely, surely why? Because I have those things or I have those fears or I have whatever, and not anymore after I receive Christ. Something shift on you and it's not, no, it's not the same. You taste the creation and the recreation in you into your life and into your experience with God. And this is from the story. So we're talking about the purification. We're talking about knowing God in a deeper way. We are talking about that experience of that blind born. Um, uh, so I just don't want to lose you. It's all one topic. So what happened here in John 9? You have to understand the love of God for you. You have to find him and see how this man saw him. This man, he never see anything in his life. He's born blind uh, in, from John 9 and verse 6. And he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. Jesus took and spat on the ground, make clay, of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind with clay. This looked to me like the creation when God the Father created Adam, he make it of the clay. So God took the part which is missing an eye and he created an eye out of it. And that is Mark seven. I think he did the same thing 
uh, and touch the, he spit into it and touch the tongue of the mute man. So here is the clay, it means he has to create a new part. And the spit or the, it's the breath of God or the touch of God making that uh, statue look like a man now alive. So he give life to these eyes. When they had the conversation with the Jew and they arrested him, he answered and said to men, a man, he's talking about Jesus, a man that he call, he's called Jesus, he don't even know him, made clay, anointed my eye and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went, I washed and received my sight. So this should be your experience and it's my experience if you didn't have that touch of God today. He creates something in him. And he said washed. So that's the washing and the cleansing, the real one, the purification that every Jew should have. Who wash in Siloam? Why did you ask him to do this? Because he's fulfilling. Jesus is fulfilling every part of the law. He's not crushing the law or... Uh, and he received his sight. So that, that man is secure and sure in his soul, in spirit, in his inner being. I was born blind. I was born blind. I guess we all of us were spiritually blind, but unless, you know, he put that eye in you that you can start to see with it and anoint it and spit on it and spit life into you, then you start to see the things. And that man on that situation, on that time, he never seen Jesus because Jesus left him blind. He said, go and wash. He never had an eye on Jesus yet. How amazing. And he speak about him like that. Um, and in John 7, 9, 17, they say unto the blind man again, what are you, you say of him that he had opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. For him, prophet is a big uh, title. But the Jews, he answered and said, whether it is, uh, they, they were trying to say is he a sinner or not, I do not know. But one thing I know, one thing, I'm born blind. And now I see, that's it. When you have that conviction of your born again experience or your life with Christ, you know, like I'm gonna share that is, I mean, it's not big deal, but when I was younger, I had tendency to be sad or whatever. Maybe the, the, the women, you know, have this and with their menses and all those, that tendency was in me. And I knew that it's not in me anymore and because of Christ. And I knew that Christ take me to a place of extremely great joy that I would never experience it otherwise. I knew, I knew, I knew that very well, that he changed me from that nature to that nature. You know, something in you has been really changed. But brother and sister, if you didn't have that experience, it's today the same Christ who touched the eye of the blind, he's touching your spirit and soul, and he wants you to have that experience. And you will go, I do not know anything, only I know that I was blind. I was not knowing Jesus the way that I think. I was knowing him uh, ceremonial, go to the church, go doing this and that, or doing the Christmas Easter things. And, but now I just something shift in my heart. Like that blind man who shift something in his heart and he start to see those people of the religion things, they couldn't see is a prophet or not, is a sinner into their side. But I do not know. But look at, at, at that testimony. Since the world began, since the world began. So he saw the creation in him. You need to see that creation in you. So you not be shaken into your knowledge of God. And I'm not trying, trying to make your experience if you had less, uh, you know, showing experience in that your experience with God is smooth and gentle because your gentle spirit is not really uh, minimizing that. But what I'm trying to say that you know, things will happen to you that, that the cleansing that uh, the Jews having without having the experience of Jesus and taste the wine of Christ, the joy, the real joy will come only with Christ. That cleansing is not enough. He went and washed and he received his sight. It's another cleansing, a real one. So since the world began, was it not heard? No man ever heard of a, a man opened the eyes of one of that was born blind. It's a sign of messianic sign. They opened the, the blind of a born blind, messianic sign. 
No one can do that except God and God himself. So you say, is he prophet? Is he sinner? I do not know. I think he's God. In another word. No one since the beginning of the word can do what happened to me. And he know it very well. And then here in the first 35, Jesus heard that, that they cast him. Now Jesus come again. And when he had found him, he said unto him, do you believe on the son of God? So secret uh, uh, that Jesus didn't say those words to many people as we think, but this was one of them. So that's a creation exactly, or that's a purification of the soul who never saw Jesus. When he met him, he did not know there was a guy who opened his eyes a few days ago, that he had to be interrogated because of him. He didn't know because he never seen him. And this is taking us to a deeper place of seeing. We talk about it now. Do you believe in the son of God? He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Uh, in the meanwhile, he said, who is he? And, and he worshiped. He fall on his face and he knew because there was a creation miracle happened to you. So you, into your heart, you know that there is a creation. You have demons that they have to run out of you when God come. And if you never had that such big experience, let be your experience today. Don't leave the Lord Jesus going without having that touch of the blind and have that purification and creation in you. This is beautiful verse that really the Lord said it to me and I was amazed and I found it here. Yeah, it is in the Bible. It's in the word. Uh, though you do not, that's the word of Peter. See how much that man loved Jesus? And I don't think, you know, um, Judah had such love. Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me, Peter? I don't think if Jesus asked that question to, to uh, Judah, the betrayer, will answer, yes, I know, I, I love you. But because of that love, see the expression of the word of people. Though you do not see him, you love him. You love him. Though you don't see him, you never, people didn't see maybe the Lord, but you have love. And the other one, though, uh, the same verse, though you do not see him, you believe in him. And then what happened when you believe in him and you rejoice with joy, unspeakable joy, unspeakable joy and full of glory. Our Father, I pray that that unspeakable joy, full of glory will fall upon every ear today upon every heart who listen to this message, Lord. We need that unspeakable joy, full of glory to fall upon us. We wanna love you the way that Peter loved you. We betrayed you like Peter time and time and time again. But so today, Lord, just put that unspeakable joy and full of glory in our heart, in my heart, the heart of my brothers and sisters, all of them, Lord, that will be suddenly realizing what you did, the shift, the creation, the shift. You're not really purifying us with the water of Selwem, but you're purifying us from inside out with an extremely great joy. We're experiencing the wine, that not the new wine, the wine of the Christ himself. Brother and sister, I pray that this will fall upon you. And this is another one of my favorite then they were, the disciples, when they saw Jesus, they were glad because they see that Farah is Ra'ur Rab. They get gladness and joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory. And this should be a, a song that I, I'm going to sing next time. So they call it purification and in Arabic or in Hebrew called Tahara. Tahara. Purification. The hour is finished. One hour. Right, okay. Well, okay, we'll stop then. <laughs>